I'm Robert Kuntz, Vice Chair of Taoist Arts Organization International. This May, I was lucky to visit my teacher, Master Haiyang, in his home in Montreal, Canada. While I was there, we conducted an interview about the arts of Xiu Dao, Taoist self-cultivation. We especially focused on the topic of meditation, internal alchemy, which Master Yang is a formidable expert in. I was able to ask Master Yang a lot of questions that were personally interesting to me as a practitioner and as his student, but also a number of questions which I hear quite often in the community. That made for a very interesting interview, and we covered topics ranging from beginner level to advanced level, as well as many things which are have probably previously not been heard about outside of China. I was very happy and I felt myself very lucky to be able to conduct such an interview with such an incredible figure. I'm not saying that just because he's my teacher. Master Yang is a really outstanding practitioner and teacher, and there's so much to learn from him. So without further ado, I would like to present you with this interview with my teacher and the president of Taoist Arts Organization International, Master Hai Yang. Hello, Master Yang. Hello, James. Thank you very much for agreeing to do this interview with me. Thank you for visiting Montreal and uh, giving me the opportunity to share my information with the community. So today, uh, I want to make the focus of the interview in, uh, about Xiu Dao, or I like to call Taoist cultivation. And this is a topic that uh, you're, you are a great expert in, and also you're my teacher, so I'm very happy to be able to ask. But for the community members who are not so familiar with this topic, I want to ask you to give a, a quick definition of Xiu Dao, and then we can open the topic from there. Okay, first of all, uh, thank you for audience to take, a, uh, take the opportunity, uh, give me the opportunity to listen my idea, my thought, my experience about this uh, great practice. Um, also, uh, I would like to keep this conversation in a friendly, casual manner. And instead of uh, being very serious, even though the topic is serious, but our attitude, uh, I, I prefer to keep, man, remain, uh, maintain a casual, easygoing manner. So what is Xiu Dao? Xiu means cultivate, practice. Dao is just a Dao, which is uh, originally in China for thousands of years and reflects the, the, the understanding of the Chinese people to the, to the universe. So Xiu Dao as a term has been used about 1,000 years of uh, time, meaning that pursuit of Tao or cultivate the Tao or refine the energy through Taoism practice. So any practice when follow the certain um, uh, principle that aiming to improve ourselves can be considered as Xiu Dao. In the modern time, I believe that it's not necessary to follow the Taoist concept only, but any other system such as Buddhism, Confucianism, even other isms that can, can be bring great benefit to ourselves, to the society, can be considered as a Xiu Dao practice as well. So in that regard, then Xiu Dao, it must have certain kind of arts or practices associated with it. What are the, what are the main Xiu Dao practices, in your opinion? Or you understand? Yes, like, because to answer this, uh, is a big question, I'd like to answer this based on Taoist uh, principle, instead of uh, borrowing other uh, system, first of all. And uh, based on Taoism, there's a lot of uh, specific practice, such as, um, use English term like meditation, or in Chinese term, and Mingxiang, um, and Daoyan, even Qigong, even some martial art can be part, can be considered as the elements of Xiu Dao. However, elements cannot be used to replace the specific, the overall practice, because elements only reflect the principle of Xiu Dao. So what is the Xiu Dao in Taoism? Specifically, is the internal alchemy cultivation or internal energy refinement or internal elixir refinement. That in the old time that can be can that's uh, were considered as a Xiu Dao. In the modern time, I think if we broaden the definition of Xiu Dao, so any practice that try to uh, that can 
benefit our our individual will be considered pseudo as long as long as it follow the right principle. Right. So then in that regard, often we talk about Xiu Dao in terms of cultivating energy. Um, but one of the things that I think is important is that we have to differentiate it also from how people understand Qigong or even yoga in modern times. And so I'm wondering if you can speak a little bit to help us understand how Xiu Dao differs from, let's say, Qigong or okay. other similar arts. Okay. I have a YouTube channel. I'm not promoting myself here, okay? I have a YouTube channel. In that YouTube channel, there's one playlist. The name is the, the, the Xiu Dao series. In that, in that, in that uh, playlist, the one video I mentioned the differences between the Qigong practice and the Xiu Dao. Yes, Qigong can be part of the Xiu Dao practice, but there's still uh, it is, um, major differences between the Dao's energy work and the, and the Qigong. What's the difference? The Xiu Dao, the traditional authentic Dao's practice is Energy should happen in the static state. In the static state. Qigong is the opposite way. It's to try to trigger the energy, motivate the energy, circulate the energy in the dynamic state. That is the major differences. So the whole system of Xiu Dao, if we borrow the follow the ancient concept, okay, the in the macro I'm I see a micro level. It is the energy should be refined, practiced, prepared in the started from the static state instead of a dynamic state. So there's no movement of Xiu Dao. And there's no routine of Xiu Dao. And this people will not will, will, will not like have a certain like like Qigong, how many routine you learn, how many level you learn. No, they just uh, follow the Tao's the principle that every benefit is from a static state, especially the prenatal energy, O Yuan Qi. Good. So then, because this is something that people ask me sometimes, they say, well, what do you do in, in Xiu Dao if you don't do some kind of specialized uh, focus or visualization or very specialized breath practice or movement, then how do you cultivate the energy? Because I can't imagine that just sitting there and being quiet is enough to cultivate energy. Of course you can move, you can think, you can visualize, you can do whatever, you can run, you can swim. But before your, um, your body, your mind, your spirit has been stabilized, then you'll be, um, you'll be able to enter the practice of Xiu Dao. You can do everything, but they are considered as the preparation of a Xiu Dao. Hmm. Yes, we say we already know, we, yes, in the static, but in the static state, it doesn't mean we do not use visualization, it doesn't mean we do not use the breathing, we doesn't use a specific posture. No, we have all the specific principles or criteria to evaluate, to guide the Xiu Dao practice. If we break it down your question, just say the breathing. The breathing, you also were breathing, right? Mm. You, you did. The breathing in the, in the, we have two type of breathing. We have the respiratory breathing, but we have energy breathing. But in Xiu Dao, we are working on the energy breathing instead of respiratory breathing. However, any biological uh, procedure or process or activity cannot avoid, cannot uh, happen without respiratory breathing. So it doesn't mean we do not practice with our brain or we don't use it. It happens naturally. But we focus on the energy breathing. So please do not get me wrong that I'm not saying in Xiu Dao we do not break, we do not have a breathing. Right? We use specific Dao's internal alchemy required energy breathing. That's the major differences. That's called static. Energy breathing should happen naturally after you work on those uh, physical part. So you do Tai Chi, you do swimming, you do yoga, you do visualization, you do massage even. But then in order to enter the prenatal stage, which is the Taoism energy practice. Right, so basically, as an example, sometimes people will take the Xiu Dao practice to be uh, holding your breath, 
for a very long period of time or making a very strong visualization in a certain part of the body or using the mind to circulate the qi. Mm. But if I understand you correctly from other lectures that you've given, that may not be the best approach. So when we do those kind of things, we have to start from first understanding stillness and then later we can add those things. Is that right? Yes. First of all, what we have no what is the static, what is the stillness, any physical strength, any mental activity, any strong breathing, you don't have to hold that strong breathing will be only the preparation part. Hmm. If you're only doing this, not only you cannot enter the real Taoism internal practice, but also may harm you with long run. Yes. In practice, we need to focus, we need to concentrate. However, strong focus, strong, con strong fo concentration against the principle of a thousand practice. Mm -hmm. In thousand practice, we should uh, follow the principle of uh, being natural. Mm -hmm. What is being natural? Being natural is that we return to the state that, a state that as if we are, uh, before we come in, before we, we come to the world. Mm -hmm. That's our original state. So that can, it is a reverse flow of uh, action or reverse flow activity, which is the nature of a uh, thousand internal practice in the energy, at the energy level. So uh, if I understand correctly, I believe that when people talk about preparatory practices and then the main part of the practice, the static part of the practice is the main part of the practice, and the preparatory practice might have a technique. But often in, in written text, or when you talk to people who practice, they differentiate between something they call like um, like the classical document, like Jingwen, and something they call the oral formula, Kojue. Yes. And I'm wondering if you can explain to our viewers, and explain to me a little bit, about what's the difference between the oral part of the transmission and the written part of the transmission? Does it make a big difference to people's understanding? Okay. Um, well, that's a very big question. Kou jue means, uh, uh, kou means oral. Jue is the key sentences. Jue means the key sentences. Jue, kou jue. So, but in Taoism, we have this uh, very popular saying that chuan wen bu chuan jue. Chuan means teach, transmit. Wen means document, teaching. Bu, without, chuan, giving, jue. So I give, teach you document, but don't teach you the key sentences mm. or key term. Why? Because that's important. That's the key considered. In the old time, were considered as a secret. Today, I do not want to use the word secret, but still a secret. Right. Still a secret. Um, first, also, the jue, which call this uh, the important uh, short sentences or proverbs, and the document, this is, should not have a contradiction to each other. No, they should harmonize each other. That's only the key point in, of the document. That's no, that's the, the their relationships. However, from the Ming Dynasty, uh, you see a lot of uh, uh, great documents such as the Xing Ming Guizhi, and uh, and uh, and also like the. Wu Liu Xianzong, those documents, they put a lot of great collection of the jue, mm. kou jue, huge, huge, before impossible, okay? Now they, those documents are collection of the important kou jue. How, but when there's a thousand kou jue in the book, this means not no kou jue anymore because everything important, which one more important? Yeah. So that's the practitioner's responsibility or teacher's responsibility to choose the right one in order to guide the practitioner at the right moment. Yes. So when they give you everything, it means they give you nothing. Right? So then we need to be specific because in the practice there's so many stages, so many steps. So each step stages require specific information, guidance, or code. Mm. So this I think it also makes a very important uh, uh, difficulty for people who want to practice this style. Because number one, it's very difficult in the West, but I also think in China it's not so same easy thing. to find same a, thing. a good same teacher. Thing. Same thing. That's the first thing. The second thing is that to be able to, to study this thing, not only do you have to have somebody to tell you how to do it at the start, but it really is helpful to have somebody to guide you at different stages of practice. And so 
Can you tell me, because I know in some books they make a, a basic explanation of practice, like a uh, modern book, like uh, uh, Jiang Weiqiao, he wrote a book called uh, Yin Shi Zi Discusses Seated Meditation, mm. and he explains the basic practice, but he doesn't go to the advanced level. I wonder if you can tell us, for people who have a hard time to find a teacher or a consistent teaching, how they can make progress in this kind of practice. Oh, that's, uh, okay, based on my teaching experience, okay, my suggestion is, please, do not have a huge or so big expectation when you practice. Mm -hmm. You just work on this, follow some simple practice, and just sit there then to visualize or to breathe, to breathe naturally, to focus on the whole body or certain area. Just repeat the same action, same activity, and with time things will happen. Of course, when you read some old document, the document will say you have this experience, that experience, but if it doesn't happen, let it to be there. So, so as a practitioner, you should have a clear goal that what you want to do. Mm. Second, based on this, this way then, you can find uh, some uh, interesting, interesting document that can explain the ancient document mm. in the modern language, in, including Chinese, English, whatever language you speak. But please do not get confused that the same practice in different language carries the same level of uh, difficulty. Mm. It doesn't mean the term read in Chinese will be easier to understand. It's not at all. Same level of uh, difficulty. Mm. But the mistake, the problem is, ha is, is happened during the translation time. So in Chinese, we use the ancient language, older language, or classical language Chinese to write, to write those documents mm. in the previous, like, like before 200 or 100 years ago. And then when you read those documents, you need to know the classical language. Some people say, oh, I know classical language, and yes, but you need a good, good level. Mm. So when they translate from Chinese to other language, the problem is, is partially caused by the translator, his experience. Also, it's caused by the nature of the information. Hmm. The quality of the translation really relies on the quality of the translator. Hmm. If the translator, the interpreter, understands the topic of oh, his present experience, most likely the trustworthiness, of the authenticity of the document of the translation is much higher than just for someone is a scholar, hmm. is a translator, and the Chinese language is a major whatever. It's much better. It's no way to compare. It's no way to compare. Okay, if you read a thousand document translated by non-practitioner, okay, not practitioner, I have to say that translation can be considered as the comedy book. Com uh, what's the, the word? Comedy book. Comedy book. <laughs> comedy book. Like, just for laugh. Uh. In Montreal, we, we have we hide a festival just for laugh. Mm. Okay, it's a. This talk show festival. So instead of going to there, you can read those translation. You'll be so 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 much laughable material there. Okay, good. So if any of the viewers would like to start a comedy career in Montreal, <laughs> I suggest that you can read the Taoist book that just for laughs. <laughs> yes, it's yes, not a bad yes. idea. So another another question I have for you. I will move the topic very slightly. We talked about Xiu Dao in a very general sense, mm. but I want to ask specifically about internal alchemy mm. related topics. Mm. One topic that's very important is internal alchemy has several popular schools. In my estimation, at mm. least seven very mm. popular mm. schools. Now, it may be too much for one interview to ask about mm. all of them, mm. but can you give a general introduction to what is the nature of different schools and okay. why do they have different ways of thinking? First of all, I have to say, uh, I mentioned to, to James before, uh, even yesterday we mentioned this, okay? I have read all the practical, practice related document um, from, uh, I don't know, from a thousand years ago until published or until 15 years ago. So I started reading a lot of newly published book that's it. every year some uh, scholar publish some book. I, I I don't have time to read this new book, but I have read all the available book or document published 15 years ago. If this reads to practice, 
I read that book. I have a huge collection in my basement, okay, mm -hmm. all the thousand documents. Uh, I I read all the the classic documents for different schools. In in the West, it seems people don't don't know too much about the differences among different schools, different school of practice. Okay, not the different school of belief, no different school of practice, or how to start this the different schools. Basically, there's a northern school of Bei Pai and the southern school, which is a Nan Pai. Mm. The Bei Pai and Nan Pai, the definition, the differentiation is not based on uh, which area they live. No, no, just uh, based on the, the 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 way how they manage the relationship between the mind and the body, or the Jing and the Qi, mm. or just the the, the Xing and the Ming. Okay, this is based on this. Depend on Bei, which the north, and the Nan with the south. These two school. Then they have other school, Xi uh, Xi Pai, one, which is the east, and then oh Xi West, Dong Pai East, and the middle school. They have the Sanfeng Feng school. They have a Wu Liu school, and uh, Chen Yingning made the Xian Xue with the immortal study. Many many small branches. Okay, we talk about practice. I'm not talking about religion. We not talk about the, the belief system. The main school is the southern, northern. Then all the other school can be considered as the what derived or developed based on northern school. Mm. Some of course are borrowed from the south, some mostly, but mostly from the north. I want, I want to ask you a, a question about yes. that specifically, because uh, according to my understanding, mm. the southern school, their early uh, goal is to cultivate the internal energy and then later the mental part becomes more important mm. whereas the northern school mm. in the beginning is more about cultivating the mental part and then the energy mm. we don't say that the both of them of course have to be mm. both both mm. at the start but mm. when you talk about the other schools mm. uh one specific question i have is some people have said that the eastern school and the western school mm because they focus more strongly in the, the lower dantian, or a little bit technical, mm. they focus more in the lower dantian mm. at the start, that they think they're more similar to the southern school, mm. but you say that they're derived from the northern school. Can you explain your logic? I think I mentioned hey, something. <laughs> so one important thing is that even northern school actually is developed from the southern school. Mm. Why? Because Zhang Boduan, when he published the first book, Wu Zhen Pian, which understand reality, that is the cornerstone, that is the milestone of the well development of uh, internal alchemy. Zhang Boduan. So people take Zhang Boduan as the founder of a mm -hmm. southern school. But of course, some people they will say Shi Xinlin, other people. But more people agree that Zhang Boduan was that. Mm -hmm. So after Zhang Boduan wrote the book, it, 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 it indicates that the internal alchemy practice had been well established because mm. the term, the concept, the theory, the system had been well developed based on him, from him. Mm. Before him, they have so many important documents, Zhou Yi, San Tong Qi, and so many, mm. but they only covered specific aspect, mm. but not as so systematic as uh, Zhang Boduan. Right. So northern, northern idea is from him. Mm. Uh, sorry, southern ideas from him, mm. the southern school. Mm. Then northern is much later from him, of course, yeah. north from the south. Mm -hmm. But then those people who develop other schools, east and west, middle, what others, they study from the northern school first. So the influence. But why they oh. study northern school? Why? Mm. How come? Why? Because from the Jin Dai, Jin, which is the, the Jin Chao, uh. Tang, Tang Dynasty, yeah. Song, Song Dynasty. Yuan uh. Dynasty, Song Yuan Jin, that time the Emperor Tengiz Khan nominated the Northern School as the national religion. Uh, I see. So the, under the, the great leaders, great leaders order, that's, uh. why, that's why they opened the, they created White Sun Temple, uh. because that's a national religion back then. Right. And then they started practicing that, mm. they got promoted. Right. That's so the reason. Was, oh, any other, the, that's the of, official. Yeah. So anyone say, well, I have to learn from this first, then yeah. I develop my own practice. You cannot deny that. Even people do not like a Yuan dynasty because that's, uh, many people say that ethnic uh, minority minded China, mm -hmm. whatever. Right? 
and killed a lot of Han people, but they made the the Northern Su as the official mm. national you know, authority. Right. right. Help the government to manage the society, to harmonize the society back then. Mm. Right? And so that's the political power to make the northern school so powerful mm. that people forget that the southern school actually was the root. Around this time, they have a Sanfeng school, Zhang Sanfeng, right? mm. a great uh, elixir uh, practitioner, mm. great Taoist priest. He saw Zhang Sanfeng so lucky that many styles was under his name. Mm. For example, he's the founder of Tai Chi, he was the founder of Xing Yi, he's the <laughs> founder of Ba Gua, he's the founder of UFO maybe, who knows, right? But I never believe this, uh. right? He's not, uh, just, there are a few Chinese people in the history, that's because Sanfeng is a beautiful name. Mm. The Chinese people love to choose a beautiful name, right, as, uh, as uh, gave their children, or mm. give, uh, give, the, give themselves even, they change their name to Sanfeng. But there's many Zhang Sanfeng, so which Zhang Sanfeng made what, we don't know. But Zhang, Zhang Sanfeng is a great, great Taoist internal alchemy practitioner. He wrote a lot of books, Zhang Sanfeng. Hmm. So no wonder people put martial art uh, founder, the title, right, and, uh, to him. The medieval branding practices. Yes, right? yes. Uh, yeah, branding, yes. The, Dao the Taoist marketing yes, department. Yes. <laughs> great. I have many more detailed questions for you, but maybe we should take a short break and then come back so that we can refresh ourselves to ask some more yes. nice questions. Yes, great idea. Okay, let's continue. So, the, you, you made me really interested to ask another question, maybe a little bit sensitive, but not, not sensitive for you, I don't think. But... You mentioned that the Northern School, or also the, the complete reality sect of mm. Taoism, mm. became the national religion of China during the Yuan Dynasty. Mm. Now, this is something I think is very difficult for people who want to do Taoist practice to understand clearly, because when you say it became the national in, uh, religion, and so it influenced many, many people mm. to study, and mm. then later they created their own styles. Mm. But those styles are not all, or not even most of them, specifically associated with Taoist religious belief or practice. Mm. So how can we understand that the, something that is a Taoist religion, like the Complete Reality School, had such a big influence, but the result of those practices is not a religious result? It's not a religious result at all. And uh, at the first place, um, government that that time, that time the the emperor of the of the Yuan emperor, uh, they 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 nominated a few Taoist priests to manage the Taoist practice in China, and to, to harmonize the society. But at the same time. People do not have to be a Taoist priest, or they don't have. They did not have to be a priest, or have to be a Taoist monk, or have to, to, did not have to believe Taoist religion to practice. It's never happened that you you, you only uh, can practice Taoist internal alchemy, and then then uh, as as then when you uh, as, as the condition is you are the priest. Please read the most important Taoist document in history. How many of those documents were written by the Taoist priest? Think about this. If they were Taoist priest, and then they read the document, but how come there's so many documents, the majority part of the documents were not Taoist priest at all? Some of them even, background was the Buddhism uh, system, like the Wu Chong Xu Liu Hua Yang. Mm. They were Buddhism, then Taoism, Taoism, Buddhism, again, they switch a couple yes. of times. And they use also Buddhist terminology. Yes, to, 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 to do this. Yes. Most of the documents, Zhang Boduan was not the Taoist priest, he was a general. Mm. The, the, right, who read the, the most important Taoist document, Wu Zhen Pian. Wei Boyang, Zhou Yi Chan Nong Qi, even early, early ago, uh, years, thousand years ago, he did not the Taoist priest at all. Mm. It's not at all. And uh, and the, like the 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 one, the, uh, the I have the book, uh, uh, what's the name? Xingming Fa Jun Ming Zhi. He's not the priest. If look at the photo, just the normal normal people. Yeah. Mm. I'm not saying thousand priests abnormal. Okay, normal means civil, mm -hmm. uh, secular, right? Not not in the clergy. Yes, yes, yes not in that system. Yes. Read the document first. 
So yeah. this is, I think, because people, they want to have very clear definition so they can understand something. But when they try to get a clear definition, sometimes they will lose the subtle aspects that are hidden inside of culture. So another way we can understand this is Taoism was deeply influenced by Confucianism, especially Neo-Confucianism. And so the Neo-Confucian addition of certain ideas to Taoist practice, I think, influenced internal alchemy. Can you tell me a little bit about how thinkers like Zhu Xi and Wang Yangming influenced that practice and, okay. and how you understand it? You use the word uh, Neo-Confucianism. The, neo the term Neo-Confucianism is uh, happened from the, in the Republican time by Mu, Mu, Mu Zhongshan, by those uh, few scholars back then. When they analyzed Chinese mm. philosophy based on the Western structure, Western mm. philosophy structure, they gave a name Neo-Confucianism. In the Confucianism school, in the history, there are the four important figures or stages. Confucius himself, mm. Montrose, Mengzi, then Zhu, Zhu Xi in the Song Dynasty, then Wang, Wang Yangming, mm. the four steps. Confucius, Confucius himself was uh, active about 2,500 years ago. So among the 2,500, 300, few hundred years, the more than 2,000 years, there are only four scholars that are impossible. However, there are the four steps of uh, Confucius thought uh, in terms of development, major changes. But each time, all of the three, they claim to restore the original concept and the practice of teach and the teaching of Confucius mm -hmm. when they make something new. I see. So the same thing happened in Taoism. Mm. If, you, if, if you think Lao Tzu is the founder of a Tao, Taoism or Taoist practice, mm. then who will be the clear, what is the clear lineage of Lao Tzu's teaching? Mm. Can anyone give me a clear lineage from Lao Tzu if you do not make fake up one? <laughs> Someone claim, I, re, uh, I forgot where the person is, okay? In, not, not, not in China, not in Canada. His, uh, his school is uh, directed from Lao Tzu. Uh. Lao Tzu is so lucky that he has a direct lineage written in certain language, they even translate into English. This never happened. Uh. Never happened. It's no such lineage at all. Because Lao Tzu, based on the history book, he uh. just disappeared. He left. Uh. He, he doesn't have a clear this kind of a teaching. Uh, so it didn't it really go through Yan Xi. Yan Xi only, only Yan Xi only stayed with him for a few days. Mm. How can it, how can how can Yan Xi claim that uh, the Yan Xian Pai? Uh, he carried everything from Lao Tzu. Uh. Lao Tzu yeah. was the like the director of National Library that time. There are many followers with, of mm. Lao Tzu. Then which one carried the clear lineage? No one knows. How come at the year, like 2000 now this year we have, all of a sudden someone claim this directed from Lao Tzu? In China you cannot do that. You only can say oh, Lao Tzu is here. Then we are here. In between no one knows. Mm -hmm. But so interesting now we have the clear lineage now. No come to yes yes. Which, which is the comedy book right? But but one of the things I think that also maybe were really useful to talk about is in martial arts or qigong a lot of the time we will have a, a lineage chart we understand oh who is my teacher you're my yes. teacher and then before you i know who who your teachers were yes. back to the beginning yes. of that tradition but in in internal alchemy or xiu dao normally there are no formal lineages is that correct uh, it's very hard to uh, to to answer this question without the lineage Oh, well, so first, what the lineage? Lineage is the relationship between teacher and students. Mm. So called lineage. Mm. When it becomes formal, official, then become lineage. Unofficial, you may not be able to use the word lineage. We mm. can only say I learned from someone. Mm. We can say this. Unless you, 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 the concept lineage is so important to someone. In Taoism, we do not use this term like a martial art. It's mm. very hard. But why? Because if you read the Wu Zhen Pian, mm. if you read the Xing Ming Gui Zhi, mm. if you read the Zhou Yi Chan Dong Qi, mm. then who, who is teaching you? Mm. You are learning that by yourself, but can you claim Lao Tzu when you read Tao Te Ching? He's your teacher. You cannot. So your teacher is someone only help you, only guide you to understand those documents. Mm. That's called the lineage. 
any practitioner, what I know, they have many, many, many teachers, like myself, my grandfather, Fu Shoubo, Pang Geming, Yang Meijun, Cao Zhenyang, so many, I have so many teachers, 10, 20, 30 teachers. If I count, someone helped me in certain small aspect, I, have, I don't know how many, maybe 50. But besides I reading all those documents, it's very hard to justify, to, clear, to define the term lineage. It's very difficult to say that. But if you say I'm learning a uh, Dragon Gate style, then I learn from this person. Then I'm learning middle school, mm. I learn from this person. But you learn from him what? Mm. What did you learn from him? Yes. But what he's teaching is right in the original, traditional, ancient document. Mm. He, maximum, he guide you to understand those documents. To answer your question, when you have a certain questions, mm. oh, to guide you to have when you have a certain experience, mm. it is considered as a lineage. Mm. It's very hard. Also, if your teacher is a professor in university, is the professor considered your lineage the one created lineage for you? Mm. In the West, many people are so addicted to the word lineage. It's not like a martial art. It's not like a martial art at all. Mm. Tao's meditation is a self-practice system guided by someone mm. in order to prevent you first making mistake and accelerate the progress. Mm. But the real benefit, the real effort is based on yourself. Mm. It's not from your teacher. It's not teacher gave you energy ball to throw to your body, then you achieve something. It's not about that. It's about helping you understand the concept. When James came to here many years ago, Every time we brought a book, I show him this is the book, right? This is the Xinming Gui Zhi, this is the Tao De Jing, and this is what I explained the document to him. That's my teaching. That's what how we teach in China. Mm. Okay, that's how we learn this. Of course, if the teacher prefer to talk, to teach, instead of using the document, that's the style of teaching. Mm. But if the authentic teaching, they have to follow the ancient document. Mm. So to summarize this, the concept of the lineage in the Taoism practice is not that clear as a, in much, it's, it's in martial art. Of course, you can go to temple. Mm. Your, your teacher is a priest. Mm. It's the, have a mustache, have the uniform, have a certain, you know, that can be religious lineage. Right. But if you can borrow the religious lineage into the practice lineage, that's up to you. Mm. But it, it is necessary I have uh, no answer for this. <laughs> we hear about this occasionally. People will say they are directly attached to Ma Danyang or Huang Yuanji, and they have a, a lineage chart. But I, I think, I, mostly, I think it's uh, not so. Mm, not correct. Not I so have to correct, say, right? just wrong. Yeah. Just wrong. Unless you, you, you demonstrate the, the clear knowledge, then when you mention Huang Yuanji, Ma Danyang, Think about this. Those great documents written by Ma Danyang or the, the Huang Yanji and their students, what the objective? Mm. They want to record, carry their teaching. Mm. And uh, there's so many, very often, there's uh, many people, for example, uh, Huang Yanji's document, mm. Le Yu Tang Yu Lu, Dao De Jing Chan Wei, and, uh, and the Chang Dao Zhen Yan, those three important documents were written mostly by his students. Mm. He had thousands of students, they worked together to collect his uh, sentence, uh, uh, teaching put into document That's hundreds of years ago. Mm. So which one would claim as the authentic teacher? Right. Even the book, even the, the book, they never mentioned themselves at all. They only gave everything to their teacher, mm. to Huang Yanji. Right. You didn't say who read this book. Who edited the book at the first place? So you don't oh, even know who they yeah, are. Yeah, of course. When they yeah. republished this, yeah. they did editing. That's maybe like uh, fifty years ago or, or twenty years ago. They have the new audio. I have all the document. If I I can show to you original document. Okay, and all the way the printing. Yeah. So that's so now all of a sudden someone say, I I, I might not go back to yes. I say this also because I learned that you can say this also because you read this document. But not a necessary right, to claim you directly from here because everyone is directly from there. Mm. Like I said, someone claim my knowledge is directly from Lao Tzu. What do you mean direct? Is Lao Tzu taught you directly? Mm. 
You know, one time, it's hard. One time I met a, a gentleman in Taiwan who told me that his teacher, when he was working in the Qing Dynasty court, so this guy must be very old, that his teacher met Laozi, and Laozi flew away on a purple cloud, and he gave him the the knowledge of Taiji Chuan and Neidan. But that, I don't think I don't think that it's so serious. I want to also again change the direction one more time and ask you when people are trying to get a, a good practice they will have many different types of experience and some of the experiences may be very powerful but how can you identify a good experience in meditation because many experiences we may have actually are not the genuine result of proper practice so read the old document mm. James like yourself all your experience you described to me, most of them, I can say, most of them are correct. Some of them is not right. We mentioned it many years ago. Oh, they, 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 oh James, it's not good. You, you, you focus too much. Oh, it's good. It's great, great, great. I remember you mm -hmm. recall this. Because all those kind of experience or phenomena are written and recorded in the ancient document. Mm. They have a specific term to describe it. The problem is it's very hard, very challenging to translate those terms into modern language, for example, San Hua Ju Ding, and uh, Wu Qi Chao Yuan, and uh, uh, Lei Sheng, uh, Shan, uh, 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 Bai Xue, mm. Huang Ya, all of them have specific meanings, and meaning has because of the specific experience. Mm. So read the ancient document, the answer will be there. They will tell you what, uh, for example, when you read the Xin Ming Guizhi, they write clearly mm. which one is good, which is not good. Mm. They all have this. Unfortunately, most people do not have this experience, but then they stop. Yeah, right? yeah. When you have some experience, it means you have reached a good level. Mm. Before you reach a certain level, it's no experience. Mm. Your experience just sit there, you feel strong when you sit there. <laughs> That's a direct experience, which is a starting point. So yeah. do not stop at that moment. When you keep going, great experience will happen. Yes. So that's another thing that I found personally through my own practice and talking to other people who practice is that there are certain periods of time when you will make very fast progress and there are certain periods of time where the progress will be very slow. But I think people, they need to be patient. But how do you know if your progress stopped? As long as you keep going, there's no such a concept of your progress stops. Mm. Because, first of all, how do you judge your own practice? Again, find an answer from the ancient document. Mm. Second, very often the so-called slow progress or the stop the uh, progress is the fast is the time of the fast progress because you return to the Wu Wei stage. Mm -hmm. In the Wu Wei stage, those experience, those phenomena will not happen every single time. Mm. Otherwise, they won't write down the book. Mm. It should happen once a while, then other time it's peaceful, like the, the ocean. The ocean is peaceful, when sometimes the big tide, the tornado, hurricane, things will happen. Mm. But that only happens once a while. Right. The same thing in the practice. If you feel just harmonized, relaxed, you can certain sensation, certain appearance, that's the right practice. It's not that you every time have to, you have to see the lighting, uh, hear the <laughs> thundering. That if you see that every very often, that's something wrong. I see. So this also is interesting to me because many people, when they want to study meditation in the beginning, or even some people who go to an advanced stage, they have a very mystical view of meditation. Uh, I think personally that it's better to understand meditation in a practical way. But many people, when they especially look at internal alchemy, they think of the energy. And they got a magical idea about uh, the embryo or the energy out of side of the body. <laughs> and so how can we understand this practice? Should we think about it as a mystical practice or how should we think about it? Should, should not think about this at all. Those experiences are just the function of the energy or result of the energy. Mm. It is not energy itself. Mm. So any sensation, experience, vision, or audible sound is a function of the practice. It's not the practice itself. Mm. So we do not practice this kind of falling uh, uh, falling snow. We are not practicing the standard uh, standard sound. Mm -hmm. 
with happen is happen. It don't happen. It do not happen. Second, do not visualize this. Mm. Thousand practice, not only thousand Chinese practice, very often they use the, some term as a metaphor mm. to describe this. It's no, it's not. We, we talk about the channel. Oh, yesterday we we with a family friend. We talk about the the practice. They asked me the do my and the ren ren my or do meridian ren meridian. I said do and the ren meridian. It's not like a tube. There's mm -hmm. the air inside. You. It's not at all just the path. Mm. Okay, most sensitive at the path. How big? How wide? How narrow? How long? How short? How? It's no clear answer for this. Mm. If you visualize that. You will never, never reach that. Mm. Thousand price like this. When you try to get this, it disappear. <laughs> yes, when you yes. when you leave this alone, it comes. Mm. By the way, I have a cat. Sometimes I call my cat, and then my cat leave, ignore me. But when the cat is hungry, then a cat come to me. So in practice, when we when we should perceive energy like a cat. Mm. When we come in, they never come. But when our body really hungry to have the energy, it will come to us. Mm. So we should manage this. So do not have to visualize this. Otherwise, it become a speculation. It will cause problem. But in modern, really recent times, since maybe the 1980s or a little bit before, there have been many people who, uh, let's say, they either they claim to practice internal alchemy, especially. And they try to systematize the practice according to individual steps, which they can teach their students from the beginning level to the advanced level. What do you think of that idea? This kind of concept can be found in the Chinese document as well. Um, when you read the Da Cheng Jie Yao, you have a nine level of mm -hmm. uh, practice. Right? Um, they have this concept, but they they build this based on their we call stages. Mm. They have a clear. It's a indicator of a, how to reach uh, how to reach different stages. They have this, and also according uh, in those kind of approach, they in, they they want to use it like a systematic approach to guide you that what specific we if you use word technique okay mm -hmm. and uh, or concept we have to know to reach that level. That's it. It's not like um, you have to read this document then you will reach the level. It's based on practice. Think about this. No matter how big the book is, we can finish reading the book in a few hours or maybe a couple of days. Now, me, now the question: Can you claim that you reach level after you read the book after three days? It's no way, right? Because the book write 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 down how to practice, mm. and you need to have this kind of uh, experience, then you will reach the level. Mm. Otherwise, those can artificially made the level doesn't mean anything. Yes, doesn't mean anything. Because some some people have claimed that. Oh, by the way, before yeah. you continue, sure. let me interrupt you. Do they have the belt for this? <laughs> like a black belt. And yeah, no, belt. not yet. Red so belt. maybe one day some 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 teacher may develop a belt system for meditation, mm. black belt of meditation. Maybe you never know. Now is the two thousand twenty four, right? Mm. Maybe in two thousand fifty four, someone will develop a belt. You never. Know, I see. I hope we record it. I hope. The belt system will not implied or applied, imposed, implied in the meditation practice. Mm. Of course, oh, sorry, let's continue. Of course, if we get there first, we can give ourselves the best belt. I will choose to have a, a rainbow belt. <laughs> uh, and so, anyway, then when we think about different levels of practice, these are spontaneous things that happen as a result of the practice, rather than making the technique more technical or more difficult. But we have to still know certain things because the energy behaves as a system in the body. Is that right? So one of the things that I think is important to point out is that the energy in the body is a natural system. So the different levels of practice will happen spontaneously. We don't have to do an increasingly advanced or increasingly difficult practice, but we still have to know subtle things that will happen at different times according to different energetic experiences. Can you explain that in more depth? What you ask me is not a question, but you want me to elaborate based on what your statement, right? I think yes. you understand well. Um, we have to know this, that, okay, why we have to study? We study what? That's the very important question. Many people come to me, hey, Master Yang, I want to study meditation. Oh, yeah, it's great. You read the books. I will say this. 
because I do not have time to teach you, okay, uh, this is the fourth chapter, second chapter, third chapter, I have no energy for that. Then the second question asked me, what book I read? I know, well, many books, Tao Te Ching, you know, scan. there's one, one gentleman named Thomas, Thomas Clary, right? He's mm -hmm. written a lot of books. I didn't read much, but I always read the first. He said, he then asked me, uh, you said that their translation is not correct. And it well, doesn't matter, you read first. Then I, I clarify for you. You have to start from somewhere. Otherwise, how can I help you? Mm -hmm. I'm not that patient to read chapter by chapter mm -hmm. uh, for you at this, at this moment. It's, too, it's, not, it's not very productive. And uh, so many people just stop when they hear I say this. Uh, now, the, the question comes back again. What, why do we study and what to study? The, to knowledge of Buddhism or Tao meditation and enterprise have many, many levels. The beginning level is what? To know what is it. And then second level, then how to practice this. Then third level is how to practice this correctly. Mm. Then next level is how to practice correctly in the right way for long-term benefit. Mm. Then at the other levels. Now the now become another question. Okay. We are we know we know that in practice we are looking for prenatal stage. Mm. What is prenatal? Prenatal is without our judgment, without our awareness, without our interference, mm -hmm. and it happened naturally. Mm -hmm. Then if this happened naturally, uh, uh, simultaneously, then why do you have to study? Mm -hmm. That's become a question. Oh, when energy experience happening, is happening, then can you have the energy, have the moment, opportunity to guide this, to judge this? For example, I feel sensation here. What do we do next time? Or should I push it up downward or make this move upward? Mm. What should I do when this happens? Mm. Do you have to have this type of thought? Mm. What's your answer? You are my students, I ask you. I think that when people have a specific experience, there's a couple of different layers that they need to consider. Mm. The first one, is does the experience that they have uh, accord properly to the principles that are laid out in, in Taoist yes. studies? Yes. So you have to understand the basic Taoist theory. There's mm. no way to avoid it. Yes. The second thing is, if you think that the practice followed the principle, if you're, very, if you're experienced, of course you know if mm. it did or not. Mm. But if you think it followed the principle, mm. does mm. it conform mm. to something specific that you know? Okay. Or now, something you don't know? Now, let me uh. one step further. Mm. What based on what it, you describe that is the still in the awareness stage. Mm. You still know it's energy rising, here's a pushing, here's mm. a sensation, how deep it is and move up or downward. Mm. I see. You still in the stage that you know what's happening. Mm. But so it is still post module, mm. postnatal. It means that we still have not entered the prenatal mm. or primordial. Mm. The real benefit of a thousand practice is when we enter the primordial, mm. prenatal. Then if we stay at here always, how can we enter here? Mm. This is another, right. another question, though, I think that's really important because this is very hard for people to understand. When you go from the postmordial stage at the start of practice, yes. then you have to establish the intention to let you lose, give up on the mind. At, at, at a certain point, to enter into the, the yes. meditation so, stage. So, at this stage, uh, you should not feel anything. Now, yes. how, how come, the, uh, how we guide our energy mm. to move at here, our spirit, mm. how to do this? So, this is why we have to study. We have to, the important part, we have to feed our spirit, mm. feed our mind, feed our energy body with the right information. Right. When this happen, our prenatal spirit, our prenatal mind, mm. our prenatal under body will react and act naturally, simultaneously, without our intervention or without our intention. Mm. So this is why we have to study the document. Our, yeah. What we study is uh, for the post module. One day, sooner or later, we will be entered here. Our spirit energy spirit will manage this. Mm. This is how I defined those practice mm. after 
decades of uh, training, reading, study. Mm. You, if you read all the document, actually, it's a make sure you are ready to enter here. Mm. So you ask him many, many times, oh, I lost the sense of a timing, I lost the sense of a sensation. That's right, I know that's great because you entered here. Mm. If you're still so clear, you breathe, you pick your back straight, what, that is still <laughs> pause module. Okay, so that's clear termination. So read the right do uh, document and nourish our spirit mm -hmm. and make our energy body ready, then be able to enter here. That's the important part. So another layer to this, then the next question I have is that there is a relationship from, let's say we forget about the start of the practice, you enter the primordial state and you, you lose awareness of self, maybe forget your body, forget your breath, forget your thoughts, whatever. And then when you emerge from that state, let's say something happens, then that will, will it, does that indicate after you have a emergence from that state, if it's an energetic experience, does that qualify as primordial or postmordial? Could you please uh, elaborate again on sure. another way to answer this question? So when you, you enter into deep meditation mm. and you, you forget yourself and your sense of time, mm. that's primordial. Mm. But when you have an energetic experience mm. afterward, let's say the, the energy moves very mm. strongly, mm. Mm then does that, that state where you suddenly have the energy experience, does that qualify as primordial or postmordial? That can be considered as the opening of the mystery gate. Mm. Xuanguan, Xuanguan is the key concept in Taoism practice, which is the developed in the Ming Dynasty. It's not by Lao Tzu, okay? <laughs> not by, okay, by whatever. In the Ming Dynasty, Xuanguan, so Xuanguan mystery gate, that you feel something changing. That's the right moment. Mm. After this, is the post-mortal, post pre-mortal. Before this, pre-pre-pre-mortal. So Xuanguan itself is a state that you, state of changing. So when people experience that, sometimes the, the, the energy moves and sometimes also they become, their consciousness becomes very clear. They become much more aware or uh, open. And in that state, they have like a, a I don't know, in, in, in Japanese Buddhism, they call it Kensho, in Chinese it means Jianxing, like to, to see the innate nature. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so when they have that kind of experience, does that mean that the, the primordial state is affecting the postmordial, or, or how, how is the relationship between that? Ming Xin Jian Xin is in the beginning is a Buddhism term, then mm. Taoism borrowed it. Some Taoism say all oh, this from Taoism, Buddha, because Xing is, is, a, is, a, is a both used both of Buddhism. And 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 the and the Taoism, so what the Ming Xin Jian Xing that you you talk about the Jian Xing mm. Jian Xing so your nature raise up mm. revealed or start work or get enlightened, and then but the first two characters of Ming Xin Ming was clarify purify and uh, uh, stabilize mm. then Xin your mind your heart your spirit so Jian mm. Xing through Ming Xin. Oh, I see. So this part is more important. In order to Jian Xing, right. then you have to Ming Xing first. Uh. So they already say this. This a pre pause module, pre module. I see. Right. So when you Jian Xing, you I understand. I feel this. You feel this. Still Ming Xing, mm. still here. Mm. But Jian Xing, you never see, never test this. Mm. Untestable. Why? Because can you know this? You improve. You but you can feel Ming Xing become clear, enlightened, certain energetic feeling or sensation or whatever. Mm. But in order to have this, you cannot see this. I see. So here's a, a question from, uh, my, is a personal question, but I think it can benefit also the audience. Many Taoist documents or uh, Taoist inspired documents borrow a certain idea from Buddhism, mm. which is when you meditate, you shouldn't enter into a state which is like a, in Chinese they call it Hun Chan, like comatose, or or uh, Hun Chan. Yeah, and then but my question is, how is the because many of my Buddhist friends when they practice, they will use a, a technique to stop the mind, and then they try to use that to enter clarity. But in Taoist practice, we have to enter into the the pre celestial state or the pre primordial state, which there's no sense of self or no sense of being mm. before before the mystery gate can open. Mm -hmm. So how can we avoid this uh, idea of Hun Chan or, or being okay. like in a comatose state? Okay, let's talk about the Hun Chan first. Hun Chan, the term, 
really um, uh, was, was emphasized by Northern School. Mm. Why Northern School? Because you have a specific practice called Zhan Shui Mo. Zhan means kill or cut the head off. Zhan, mm. chop the head off. Very violent. Huh? Mm-hmm. Shui means sleeping. Mo, devil. Mm. Or the ghost make people sleep. Mm. So, so to have a practice that you be able, you can practice, you can see the certain position without sleeping. Mm. So which is a very religious approach mm. because northern school the word was a, were very religious in the beginning, mm. those people. And as a result, most of them didn't live very long. See. For example, Nan. You see you see Nan Wuzu and the, the, the southern five ancestors mm. compared to Bei Xiren, seven real person of the north. Mm. They northern live very long. Mm. Then they live average 50, 40, not a safe thing. Okay, mm. 50s. The southern ancestors. Southern. Why? They, because uh, they fought on Ku Xiu. Oh, okay. Religious approach. Ku Xiu ku mean, right. ku means uh, hard. Xiu means practice. Mm. They don't sleep. They, 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 they dig a big hole on the ground. They, they sit there. They, 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 they eat barely food. Don't eat. Oh, they did so many things to Ku Xiu. They mm. believe by doing that, you improve yourself in any level. Mm. Which according to the modern scientific method, it's wrong. Mm. It's totally wrong. So religious approach cannot use to replace energy practice. Right. Think about this. By the way, if you uh, promote those kind of religious practice as they set up in the beginning mm. of the northern, this kind of school, religious, uh, a total religious school, will you do this? <laughs> Will you dig a hole in Boston or in New York? You you put yourself in there. Your student, your wife carry food for you. Will you do it? If you don't do this, why you blindly promote this idea? Oh, I see. Yeah. So now come back to the question. Not to sleep. Hmm. Then in order to not sleep, they have this, they, they they try to define what is being sleepy and being entering uh, uh, and entering the. We see the, uh, the, the state before the Quan mystery gate open, or in the unpolarized state of the energy. Mm. What difference between this? So if you fall to sleep, then you are in the bad stage. Mm-hmm. Then, then you, you, you still enjoy this energy, feel this, but that means you have the right one. Uh. So to them, to the original approach, they have to stop sleeping. They do, they do this. I think a sleeping deprivation is not a, is not good, right? Not good. I, 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 it's not good. Based on my experience, if I don't sleep well, I won't be able to function well. Yes. But according to the early state of the, the, the practice, that's the great state. Kushu, you have the kushu, right? You do it. That's the temple teach you. Temple ask you. You have to do it. So is it right or wrong? So if it's wrong, how come people follow the word of the thousand God? Make such a big mistake. <laughs> Where's the Lao Tzu? Where where is the the the, yeah. the, the sages? Mm. Right? Yeah, and Lao Tzu never ask you not to sleep. Never exactly. Mm. They trace the word of the Lao Tzu. By the way, Lao Tzu says Xiang Di Zhi Xian is the, the Tao is earlier than the God. If there's a God, he said. If there's a God, God follow the Tao. I always wondered about this in the Tao Te Ching, that. At that time, in the late Zhou Dynasty or early Warring yes. States period, the dynastic religion had uh, the biggest deity is called Shangdi, right? Yes. And so one of my questions is that I it looks to me like early Taoist religion around the first century AD, they did they carry the Zhou Dynasty imperial court religion as the Taoist religion, or is it something different? Whoa, if you, oh, I, I did a huge research about that time. If you read the document of the Shang, Shang, that kind of folk religion, mm. there's a very violent, barbaric, okay? They just kill people then to worship their God. By the way, do you know Chinese band? What is Chinese band? Mantle, right? Uh, mantle, you, you, uh. do, you, do you like it? So so. Money you say so so because your wife the Chinese she cooked for you, right? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. But for not if not the Chinese, 
And they say, oh, it's very delicious. I have a friend, many people, hey, it's so delicious. I bought in Chinatown. I know, yeah, yeah I make a made by myself. I don't yeah. like, right? You know, what is the history of that? No. Yeah, exactly. Because in the Shang, in the, even in the early in the Shang Dynasty, for hundreds of years, they kill people, then yeah. put their head to worship their god, oh. to keep their god. So later on, in the Shang, in other, they change, they, they kill animal. Huh. Even later, even three kingdoms, even better, they make the band as oh. the shape of the of the head wow. to worship the god. Oh, that's incredible. Yes. Later, they turn to fruit, like mm. peach, apple, you know, carry the nice name. Uh. Right? So now, where is the 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 the, the, the god? Uh. Right. If you study history. Yes. Right. Of course, right. Oh, I, 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 I went to temple to study. I studied all the major religions. Mm. Studying religion is my biggest, one of the biggest passion. Mm. I studied the Bible, I studied the Korean, I studied Buddhism, I studied Taoism, I studied many isms. But I realized all those religions are great, have a great benefit to our society, to our individual. However, in energy practice, you do not have to believe in certain religion in order to refine your postmodal energy. Mm. Or else, those kind of practices will be only dominated, monopolized by Taoism mm. or Buddhism maximum. Mm. How about other Christianity, Islamic, they don't have energy practice otherwise. Mm. They must have. They must have. Yes, yes. Right. And that's one that's of the... What I, this proof. Yes. That you use religious approach, the concept to guide the energy practice, mm. which is wrong against original Taoism principle. Mm. There's a, a saying in English now, gatekeeping. The, yes. the kind of gatekeeping behavior where mm. we try to keep people out because you use a certain kind of logical tactic to, to keep them out. But so I didn't know that about Mantua before. I understand now my wife, my wife doesn't want me to dip them in maple syrup. She said, no, no, offend her, her no. Chinese culture. I don't think she knows this or not. <laughs> Most Chinese people don't know that. Chinese people, the very interesting people that remember great thing, good thing, very clear. Anything violent, a little bit, uh, they forget. Oh, I see. They forget. The cultural amnesia. Nothing happened. Uh. Nothing happened. Mm. Right. Those stories, you ask Chinese, one year, maybe 10,000, maybe 100,000 heard about this. I see. I see. But they, they don't want to study history, want to study recent history, right? From yes. the 1920s, all the great, we win the revolution. They want to hear this. Yes. Any all the time, oh, great civilization, they, they believe in this. Right. And anything, violence, killing, murdering, no, that's a small event, which is not the true. It's a major part of a Chinese history. Mm. Think about this. Mm. It, it makes me wonder, because even the origin of some schools of Taoism, they're represented by swords. They have the sword, but but in so even in internal alchemy, they have a lot of symbolism that comes from old cultural events. Why did the sword? Because Hui Jian. Uh, Hui means wisdom, mm. sages. Mm. Oh, Jian means the sword. Mm. So my determination in the energy level is so strong that will dispute, uh, uh, will kill all the bad thing. Ah, I see. It's a kind of. Uh, Way to describe the so they symbolic. Uh. So in practice, you don't have to put a sword in the back to practice Hui Jian. Right. Wisdom sword. Uh. It's your determination. Your energy is mm. strong to make the thing by the thing disappear. Oh, I see. I decided. So you don't need to put a spear, a sword here again. <laughs> right. So then, the, but since we're talking about swords, one thing that people, especially in North America, but I think Europe too they have a really hard time understanding in martial arts, in Chinese internal martial arts especially, we like to say that they have a Taoist influence and many internal martial artists have made their careers by talking about Taoist martial arts. But it doesn't seem completely accurate the way that they describe this. Can you tell me, what's the relationship between the internal martial arts and Xiu Dao practice? Internal martial art has no direct relationship with the Xiu Dao practice. Yes, internal martial artists practice Xiu Dao and the martial art, or oh, the, the Xiu Dao practitioner practice martial at the same time. It doesn't, it, it cannot 
build the direct link between these two practices. Why? Because one is the in, inward approach, the other one external approach. Mm. You move. One is static, one is dynamic. One is based on well-being, right, and unpolarized energy. The other one, strong energy to mm. destroy others. One is, the, you know, to harmonize everything, then to benefit ourselves. Then the other one, no, have to be strong. Mm. One is very yin, the other one very young. I see. Right? You think about a totally different approach. Mm. Someone say, I can harmonize, yes, as an individual, that the individual benefit. Mm. As a two technical system, there are no relationship, no mm. direct relationships. Mm. It depends on individual ourselves to harmonize them. Mm. It is necessary, it depends on your own objective of a practice. Right. Years ago, you said to me, if you practice different kinds of practice martial arts or Qigong or Taoism, you should keep them separate until you reach a certain level. And if you understand them well, then you can start to make a relationship between them, but not immediately from the start. Yeah, you, you cannot try to replace martial art by working on meditation. Then you cannot improve meditation by strengthening your leg at the same time. Some people say, oh, not true, because if I sit very long, I, I feel my leg so I stretch. Yeah, you stretch, not the martial art. <laughs> the objective of martial art is to defend yourself by destroying other people. No, I don't want to do it. So you're not doing martial art. Right. right. You're doing exercise. Yes. Right. Okay. Well, I think that uh, we covered a lot of topics so far. And so I think it, maybe we should take a short break. Yes. Drink a little bit of tea and then yes, come back. Exactly. <laughs> I'm open to any question. Again, I do not want to insult anybody. Okay, it's uh, I just free, uh, friendly, and uh, frankly, and uh, honestly share my information with uh, people. Great. Okay, great. So, uh, uh, one thing that you mentioned is the idea of Jan Shui Mo, the the stop the, the mm. sleep demon. Mm. So when I. I Actually, internal alchemy or Xiudao is a really interesting field because there's a lot of different people with different opinions over the years. Mm. And one modern document I read, it's called uh, Fang Dao Yulu. It was mm -hmm. written in, in Taiwan. Yes. And some of the masters in that book said, oh, actually, after meditation, if you feel tired, it's okay to go to sleep. Do you agree with that? Of course. You, you should go to sleep. Yes. No matter what kind of ism practice, we have to be a normal, natural person. Mm. It's not like after practice, you become an abnormal person before become a super person. Mm. How about if you feel tired when you practice? We should feel tired after practice because yeah. especially in the modern time, mm. we have so many stimulation, information, sound, light, pollution, so and emotion, mm. so many. So you feel tired, feel kind of, uh, you know, relaxed. That's the best stage. If you feel after pride, you feel, oh, I'm so energetic. That, that means I'm telling you that is something wrong. Mm. You should not feel energetic after practice meditation. Then you want to sleep, go to sleep. But do not do uh, excessive physical exercise after practice. The very often I tell my students, well, in the morning to martial art, evening maybe, Meditation mm. is better. Uh, there's one cell called Chen Tuan Shui Gong. Mm. Uh, sleeping meditation. Chen Tuan divided by Chen Tuan. Mm. That's from the Southern School. Mm. So people practice when they are sleeping. But how can you practice when you're sleeping? Well, no, into the, the, the meditation or Xiu Dao state. Then when you sleep, energy will work by itself. Oh. Right? That's the, we, so do not try to you know, against our human nature or our, our, our biological function of the body or the structure of the body or, or how we made it, our body. Then, mm. then to not sleep, no, that's wrong. Just be a natural person, be a real. Mm. Then we will receive the benefit of a practice. Mm. Another thing is people they often wonder about things like fasting in relation to meditation. I know Taoism has bigu practice, mm. but I think that people, they, they misinterpret that. Mm. They think fasting means you just don't eat. But I think it must mean something else. What, what, how do they control their diet and what effect does it have on their meditation practice? 
First of all, when you read the early document of the of the Tao of the Tao practice, no fasting. Why later become a part of this? Mm. Because when you practice in the mountain, in the temple, in the in the cave, uh, oh, it's no food. Oh, no one deliver food for you. No dependent, no corner store, <laughs> no supermarket, no Walmart, no what's the what's the the, the big store in the United States? Uh, Whole Foods, oh, Whole, Whole Foods, yeah, yeah. no such store. Okay, mm. no phone call, the online delivery, no no such stuff. So limit the supply for the people to have a practice that you'll be able to survive and maintain practice without eating a lot of food. Mm. First. Second, they found out what is great, I feel better what I do. So you should eat certain food. Mm. Read the old document, Yun Ji Qi Jian Dao Zhang. They have tons of formula for this. What's mm. that? You read that, the only, they use the seed, mm. right? Or fruit, or dry food. That's very at a high level of the nutrients, mm. mineral, energy, oil. That's great. So eat that, of course, you don't feel hungry. Mm. Second. Third, if you eat a lot of food over consuming the food, of course, fasting is good. When I was a student in the uh, university for the years, every year I do two times. Mm. This time lasts one week or two weeks. Mm. But what I do, what I did is I will eat a vegetable and uh, and some uh, from the pick up from the playground, wash it first, then eat it that to trigger the kind of uh, fast diarrhea uh, procedure. And then I drink water, eat a little bit, see it based on all the formula, and then I still functional. I did the years that time. Mm. And in Canada, I stopped doing that. Why? Because I do not I do not eat a lot of food every day. Mm. Sometimes I eat a lot, I'm happy, happy. Mm. But sometimes very little bit, so I manage myself. Of course that's good, good mm. practice. Very good. But now you know the history, now the practice traditionally, and then now the value of the nowadays. Mm. It's great. You do it, do it, but do not get malnutrition. That's very, very important. Yes. So that's a carefully monitor the practice. Also, I think people's ideas about this changed over time as they got more information. Because as an example, in the Ma Wang Dui mm. excavation mm. site, mm. they have the documents like quitting the grain and eating qi. Yes. But, but from that time, I don't think people understood it so well, right? Yes. And so as they became to understand it better, what I, what I want to... Um, say just on my part before I ask the next question is that you don't have to restrict yourself from being a human being to practice Taoist energy work at the same time isn't it true that people they need to follow certain rules in their lives how should they understand how to adjust their behavior to make the energy work better for them oh avoid the emotional you know um, there's a uh, it's a uh... Uh, up and down, frustration, emotional, and the second, man manage your, your, your diet, do not eat too much, not be very hungry. Also, uh, avoid any unnecessary activity which make you, you know, feel nervous, upset you. That's it. That's the basic thing. Be natural, be real. Mm -hmm. That's the most important part. Again, be, before become a super person, then be a normal person. <laughs> instead of, oh, my, be, instead of become a I have no more person. Hey, okay. a super cat. <laughs> Every day, you know, this cat. <laughs> so basically, when you practice Xiu Dao, mm. just being normally healthy in your behavior should be enough. You don't have to go to an extreme. I think so. I think so. You don't have to so extreme. By the way, the definition of being healthy, if you read the document, the thousand book, it's not such a concept. Mm. Right. And in Taoism concept, they say, well, you become immortal. That I see. Right? Oh, you, you, you're happy. Mm. Oh, you follow the Tao. Mm. It's no specific, like the right now, the blood, blood pressure, <laughs> the, the, blue, the glucose level, and the, the body, what's in the, the weight the index. It's no such concept all the days. So that, that definition I've uh, involved as well, uh, being healthy. Many people who study Chinese medicine in Western countries they believe that Chinese medicine and Taoism, especially energetic practice, are very closely related. Do you agree with that? What do you think about that? Uh, again, you are licensed acupuncture. You studied medicine. I studied medicine in, in university. And I mainly studied the Chinese medicine and learned a little bit of Western medicine as part of a curriculum like back then when I was the 20s. 
I have to say that to practice the Taoism, it's better to know TCM, to know some of this, because the language can 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 be used to explain the the Taoism practice. However, when you read the, the classic ancient Taoism document, it has nothing to do with TCM or Chinese medicine. Mm. Totally different system, different language, different nothing the same. Mm. Nothing the same. Mm. So to answer this, it will have of course have a knowledge power. Knowledge is always power. Mm. But TCM knowledge will not replace the 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 right. the thousand or Xiu Dao knowledge. Not at all. We we'll have to understand, but it's not necessary. Some some people might say they mutually influence each other. For instance, they might say that the Yellow Emperor internal classic borrows some philosophical foundation from Taoism, or they might say later on, let's say a book like Xingming Guizhi, it has a chapter about the life cycle of human beings. It borrows from the internal classic. Or we can say that the uh, Qi Jing Ba Mai Kao, that, that the book about the eight extraordinary meridians, borrows from Taoism or influenced Taoism later. But what is the relationship there? Because the Chinese medicine, obviously, for treating people's illnesses, is not necessarily for cultivating them yourself. So how did they interact before in the past? You, you, when you, uh, James have a tendency. When he asks a question, he asks a long question, but one question covers a lot of small questions, actually. It's very hard to start this. So let me give a try, okay? Please keep this part. Don't delete this part. <laughs> I'm kidding, okay? I always tease him. Um, he mentioned like Qi Jing Ba Mai Kao, written by Li Shizhen, and uh, he, he, he used the word, word meridian. We happen to know this, okay? There's a human body. TCM, they try to find the problem of that person, then treat this. Mm. But a uh, Tao meditation, no. I'm healthy I'm, or unhealthy, I don't care. I want to improve, become another energy person, mm. another level. Mm. So they are targeted on the same body, but with different objective mm. or different goal. Mm. All the TCM book, mainly focus on to treat unhealthy person. Mm. You think about this. All the, the term used to describe someone is not healthy. Of course, they, say, they talk about what is healthy. You don't feel pain, you don't feel that's healthy. Mm. But the, the book will write down if you have problem, how to help you, right? Mm. But the, the meditation, show down part, no one talk about you are not healthy or healthy. Mm. You still assume, presume you are healthy. Mm. Of course, if you are not healthy, you practice become healthy. That's a, 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 it's a result. Mm. But people are not looking for being healthy in order to practice this. Mm. You, you see what, what I mean, right? Yeah. Same person, but this one wants to treat being healthy. Here, they don't care if you're healthy or not. You practice, you become another level. Right. That's the fundamental differences. So you use this language to stand here. Doesn't work. Mm. Doesn't work. In Montreal, I live here. There's a in Chinese community. There's a many people mm. are so Chinese, huh? so actively learning Chinese medicine. Mm. They are not a licensed TCM practitioner. Mm. They love this. When you see you have a cold, you have a flu, oh, they, they chase you. Why they want to practice their Chinese medicine with you? Sound crazy, but what it is? I always tell them, look, you guys stop. You you have to stop because first of all it's danger. Second, you are not doing him good, maybe do harm. Third thing is, why do you do this? Mm. Right? Why do you do this? Let the professional deal with the professional issue if there's an issue. Uh. And so same thing. If you practice TCM and you're looking for someone practice meditation or show down, then you chase them, you teach them how to be healthy. They don't care about this part. <laughs> We have different objective to practice, right? Like a TV set and the computer monitor uh. look the same. However, TV is a signal or cable. Uh. Computer, you all man you monitor here, right? It's not the same thing. It look the same image, same YouTube. It's not the same. Now technology harmonize them together now, but different objective at the first place. Mm. But also for modern people, though. 
one of the things that people might say is, well, I would like to be both healthy and also cultivate the Tao. So do you think that it's okay for people to have to take Xiu Dao practice? Also, part of it is about the lifestyle. Of course, not. that's a great idea. People practice Xiu Dao, no one will say, I, I want to be unhealthy. No, no one say this. This, well, I, I just, I'm doing this. Hmm. Someone, you might think about this. Someone, they, they didn't know that they were not healthy, they don't sleep. They starve mm. themselves in, the, in, 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 in a big hole on the ground mm. or the, in, in the cave. Mm. They didn't they know that not healthy, but in modern time, that's not healthy. But back then, they believed they were doing something great oh. according to religious approach. Right. Of course, there's an individual practice, the decision you want to learn this, you know, the ball is no problem. What I said is you should not use this one to explain here, right. even though they knew use the meridian. In all the time, there's no concept in Chinese medicine about the wind, the, ten, uh, the nervous system. No, they use the word meridian. Mm. So both of them use the meridian. Right. But how, how much or percentage of the meridian the term used in the, in the Mani Xiu Dao? Very, very tiny, mm. almost neglectable. Mm. Almost. Mm. A lot of it was brought in later, right? Much later, but yes. neglectable. They talk about the, the how to refine the energy. Mm. But later they talk about some circulation system. It's yeah. not like you have a tube in the body. Mm. Not at all. Not at all. Mm. But this area, no, they have to be very precise, right? Yeah. Where to put the needle, even what the medicine goes to which meridian, which. Of course, right. they, dif they want different, totally different thing. Totally different. Yes, here is the boundary, okay? So, not this. Right. Okay. So, now to, to begin to conclude the interview, I want to ask a little bit about your personal experience teaching students, especially in the Western country, or we can say, how does teaching Xiu Dao to Western people and Chinese people differ? Uh, to Chinese people in the West, I don't teach them. Oh, okay. Why? I don't care. Yeah. Why I don't care? Because they just have some curiosity. Right. And they believe they are Chinese, we should know automatically. Yeah. They, 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 they missed, blended the ethnic background with the culture. Oh, with the culture. <laughs> My camp, sorry. With the culture background. It's nothing to do with this. Mm. I don't, I, I, you want to learn from me, I talk to you, I try to discourage you. And then you want to keep going, I teach you. Otherwise, <laughs> I don't care. Why? Right. Because I live in Canada, I live in the West, I speak English now. Then to non-Chinese, uh, what I do is I like them right, to, to read the books. Mm. No matter the, good, the book is good or not, I don't, you read it first, then I clarify for you. Mm. If you do not want to make that effort, I'm sorry, too bad. Mm. Right? So very often, I only teach people who have experience. Right. And then I teach them. Because it's very hard for me to to start from beginning to like to like them, right? To 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 meditate is so hard, so hard. I prefer teach teachers instead of uh, pure beginners. Okay. Right, right. That makes sense. So then, from your perspective, you practice Xiu Dao now for a very long time, mm. since at least since the nineteen eighties, and so uh, you have gone for many, many years doing this kind of practice. How do you feel that it's impacted you at different stages in your life? Oh, it just happened me. Um, that happened me to improve myself better. I have to say that, say this, okay? Um, Shodao practice is great. However, that is like a double blade sword. Mm. Um, if we do not have a certain lifestyle, may not be that good for us. Mm. Okay. Uh, for example, myself, I have a lot of uh, family professional responsibility. And uh, very often, I cannot practice as it should be. Mm. For long run, may create certain harmful consequences to me due to the, the situation. Um, I, but overall, it helped me a lot um, in terms of uh, helping me to understand myself, understand old culture, civilization, 
practice sense of the great energy. Also, I enjoy of、uh, helping others. Mm. Mm, but individually,、uh, may not. Uh, may not be. I、uh, may not be in the perfect、uh, living environment or living condition, according to the concept of the perfect state of Xiu Dao.、Mm. Uh, do I have to?、Uh, question become. Do I have to leave the worldly world, like my family from ability have lived this, in order to for my own practice, like. Many people did in history, and even many people doing now in China.、Mm. It's very hard for me.、Mm. It's my weakness.、Mm. I, I still enjoy the most of time. I, I enjoy the most when I spend the time with my children, with my you know my pet, in my backyard, my read books.、Mm. So sometimes making me you know upset, making me a little bit angry,、uh, have、uh, some emotional you know disturbance.、Mm. But part of life.、Mm. And、uh, I use Xiu Dao to balance this,、mm. even though it may not、uh, in the the best state or may have a certain you know negative impact on me,、mm. because we need a, a perfect state, right? And、uh, but I I I just take what it comes, because I love the art. I take this as a, as a, a great. Opportunity to experience what the ancestor or previous practitioner or those sages, those great people have done, right? Like why criticize the the Beijing Northern、uh, Seven real person or the we say the the great、uh, mm. the founders? It's not like I criticize themselves as a personality or individual, but I criticize their approach.、Mm. Which was limited by the time, by the、mm. knowledge practice. We are facing different challenges in life.、Right. They were facing, they were facing, you know, shortage of、uh, of supply, the war that time, right, war time. But we are facing different challenges. For example, the information, the social media, and the family responsibility, professional obligation, and the personality challenges. It's、mm. many many things. So, just the、uh, practice days. To receive what it comes without speculate too much.、Mm. And, uh, something good, let will come this. And something not good, well, do not blame on the art. Blame on ourselves. Oh, blame on the kite. <laughs> <laughs> blame it on the rain. Yes, blame on the camera because <laughs> the camera made me say to catch the moment when the kite jumped on my lap. <laughs> right. Okay, well, I think this is a good place to to leave it. So I want to thank you very much again for generously giving me and our audience your time. It's been very, very interesting and illuminating, and I have a lot to think about. I think also our audience will have a lot to think about too. Oh, thank you for giving me opportunity to share my story experience with the community. Okay, thank you. See you next time.